Okay, in this lecture we're going to go over question number 54. So, question number 54. Uh, previously, an organization reported that teenagers spent 4.5 hours per week on average on the phone. Uh, the organization thinks that the current mean is higher. Okay, um, 15 randomly chosen teenagers were asked how many uh, hours per week they spent on the phone. Uh, the sample um, the sample mean was 4.75 hours with a sample standard deviation of two, uh, of two uh, with a probability of 5% of committing type 1 error, answer the following. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight a few things. Uh, let's make some um, comments. Okay, so uh, previously, so what this is, 4.5 hours, uh, we're going to, previous population mean on the phone. The organization thinks that the current mean is higher. Okay, so anticipated higher. 15 randomly chosen teenagers. Okay, we're going to do this. This is uh, okay in this lecture. Okay, so this right here um, let's see here, view, new comment, uh, sample. We're asked how many hours per week they spent on the phone, hours per week they spent on the phone. Uh, this right here um, is the dependent variable, okay, um, and this right here is, uh, the, the sample, um, is uh, more or less the independent variable. Uh, the sample mean was 4.75 hours. Uh, so uh, sample mean, sample mean, uh, with a sample standard deviation, sample SD, two. So let's do sample mean 4.75, dependent variable, is a uh, time spent on phone sample teenagers. Um, let's see here, previous population mean is 4.5. And then uh, let's see here, new comment on point or 5% uh, type 1 error. Okay, so let's pull up the hypothesis testing decision tree, um, and you can get that on Canvas. You go to Unit 4, Principal Resources, and you click on Hypothesis Testing Decision Tree. First, um, is this dealing with continuous data, or is this comparing frequencies? That's the first question. And you'll notice right up here it says continuous data, or over here it says frequencies. So what are we dealing with? The, uh, the dependent variable, what, what is that? The dependent variable is the amount of time, the average amount of time that teenagers spend on the phone. Is that a frequency? Uh, are we counting the number of teenagers or are we looking at the average amount of time? Um, and so we're looking at the average amount of time, so we're dealing with continuous data. Okay, next. Uh, are you examining the difference between groups or be, uh, between a sample and a population? Okay, between groups or a sample and a population? We're looking at a sample of 15 teenagers compared to a previously known population, right? So this is the previously known population right here. Uh, this is the 15 teenagers. Uh, so we're looking at a sample compared to teenagers. Uh, so we're going to um, keep going with this and uh, we'll click right here. And then that'll bring us to the single sample uh, test. And you can go through this step by step, all six steps in the process. Um, to be able to uh, run the uh, hypothesis test, okay? But we know now that we are doing a single sample hypothesis test, okay? So circle or highlight all of the following that are true about the above scenario. So what tail is it? That's a good question. Remember we heard greater than. Greater than, which means that it's going to be a right-tailed test. Anytime that you hear greater than, means that it's going to be a right-tailed test. Uh, two-tailed test would say different, left-tailed test would say less than. 
Okay, single sample independent paired. Well, we just ran this uh, thing to make sure that we knew that it is a single sample. Okay, and then the test statistic. What is the test statistic? We would use a z-score if we had a population standard deviation. Do we have a population standard deviation? No, we do not. So therefore, since we only have a sample standard deviation and the sample is pretty small, we're going to use a t-score. f and chi-squared are not uh, applicable here. Okay, so what is the independent variable? The independent variable, uh, remember, is um, the uh, age of the individuals. In other words, e.g. teenagers. Uh, based on the fact that they're teenagers, how much time do they spend on the phone? Does that make sense? You tracking with that? Uh, the amount of time that they spend on the phone is dependent on whether or not they're a teenager. And the dependent variable is the amount of time spent on the phone, or uh, A. So this is A, this is B, okay? And you know, you could get confused. You could say a sample of 15, you could say weeks, dot, 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 but the correct answers are the uh, age of the individuals and the amount of time spent on the phone. Okay, and then the null and alternative hypothesis. So in order to determine what the null and alternative hypothesis are, um, I have this fun little right up here examples of null and alternative hypotheses. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this because why not? Uh, you know, I already give it to you, so you might as well, you know, use it as a reference. And uh, I'm just going to put it right here. And I'm going to say, okay, um, I'm going to put this right there. And I'm going to put this right here. And uh, this right now is, is this an upper tail or a lower tail test? The, the, you know, notice I did grab the directional test, but the question is, is, is this the right direction? And the answer is, yes, it is. So this is an upper tail test because we think that the sample of 15 students is going to be higher than the previous average of 4.5 hours per week. And then uh, the null hypothesis, in other words, the hypothesis that says that there is no difference between them is going to be that uh, the new population um, is going to be less than, four point, less than or equal to 4.5 hours per week, okay? The next question that we have is with an alpha of 0.01, what is the test critical value? What is the test critical value? Um, and so we're going to come right in here. In order to find the test critical value, you need to pull out your teacher. Okay? So I'm going to go to downloads because I've already downloaded this way too much. Um, you, should, you guys should know where it is. It's under the printable resources. And we've got the teacher. Now, do y'all recall how many people were in the sample? There was 15 people in the sample, which means that we've got to go to 14 because it's degrees of freedom. So 14 and then the alpha of 0.01 with a one-tailed test. So we've got a one-tailed test because we've got, we're have got we dealing with a T-score. We've got a one-tailed test. Uh, and then we've got, uh, so we've got an alpha of 0.01 and the degrees of freedom. So 14 intersecting with 0.01. So for the one-tailed test, 0.01, 14 is... 2.624, 2.624. Now the question is, is, is it a positive or is it a negative 2.624? And the answer is positive. And the reason why is because it is an upper tail test. Because it's an upper tail test, it's going to be positive. If we said less than, then it would be negative. And uh, what is this critical value? This critical value is that delineating point between the point of rejection and the point where you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So uh, the next question that I have is, uh, what is, really I kind of did this out of order, uh, what is the null, uh, an alternative hypothesis? This really should have gone, let's do this. Um, I don't know why it's out of order like that. Uh, because before we can determine uh, what the uh, critical value is, we've got to know what uh, test statistic we have. We happen to have already known it because we had it right there. But what is the test statistic? It is T, okay, and the calculated value. What is the calculated value of the test statistic? How do we find the calculated value of the test statistic? That is 
So the T calculated value is essentially, you find it in the same exact way that you find the Z value. Um, the T calculated value, I'm gonna copy this uh, formula really quick. X bar minus mu divided by uh, the standard deviation divided by the insert symbol square root of n. Okay, so this is uh, this is the formula to find t. So it's pretty much the exact same formula to find your z-score. The big difference is that um, now uh, with a t-score, you're comparing it to a, to a t distribution instead of a z distribution. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got 4.75. Okay, so 4.75 minus uh, 4.5, okay, divided by the standard deviation of the sample, and the standard deviation of the sample is 2, uh, divided by the square root of uh, 15, because 15 is the sample. So let's go ahead and put this into Excel. Um, I'm going to pull up Excel really quick. Um, and let's do this, equals divided by square root, okay, so I'll copy this to just so that we can have that, but this is going to be, uh, let's see, what, what is this? It does not like me. There we go. Um, so this is going to be 0 0.484 is uh, is the t. T calc equals 0 0.484. Okay. So let me just make this. There we go. Okay, so with an alpha of 0.01, what is or are the test critical values? We've got 2.624, and then uh, what would be considered type 1 error? Uh, remember, type 1 error is when you say that you've got something significant, but you don't actually have something significant. So in other words, to, to conclude that the current mean hours per week is higher than 4.5, when in fact it is higher, uh, that would be correct. Um, so that this this is not type 1 error this is not an error um, if you conclude that the current mean hours per week is higher when it actually is uh, you're not making an error to conclude that the current mean hours per week is higher than 4.5 when in fact uh, it is the same the same or less uh, this right here would be uh, type 1 error so uh, we're going to highlight that um, then let's just keep on looking at this to conclude that the mean hours per week is currently 4.5 when in fact it is higher. This would be type 2 error to say when there uh, is not a difference, when there really is. Then to conclude that the mean per hours per week is not, is not, higher, is not higher than 4.5 when in fact it is not higher. And that once again would also be correct, so therefore it wouldn't be an error. Next, what is the decision rule? And I put a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, so fail to reject the null hypothesis if, what do I need to put in here? I need to put the test statistic, right? If t calc is, what is the t crit value? 2.624. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm also going to put it right here. Okay, so fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, you're saying uh, there is no difference um, between the sample of uh, the new sample and the population. Uh, fail to do that if t calc is greater than, less than. Uh, remember, it's always going to include an equal sign. So um, right away, we're going to get rid of those. Um, and then also right away, on this one, we're going to get rid of those. So reject the null hypothesis if t calc is going to be one of those. And then uh, 
let's see, which one is it? Fail to reject. We think that it's going to be greater than, so we would reject it if it is less than or equal to. So we're going to put less than or equal to. Then reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we're saying there is a difference if t calc is greater than t crit of 2.624. So this right here is the decision rule, um, or the uh, the fail to reject decision rule and the reject decision rule. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna yeah. Let's just keep moving. Um, and then if this was a two-tailed test, this is what you would have used, okay? But this is not a two-tailed test, so we can just delete it, okay? What is your decision? Uh, what is the test calc value? Uh, remember, right, right away we came up here. Let's uh, copy this, bring it down here. Test calc value is 0.484. Uh, so use the test calc value and compare the critical value compare it to the critical value and make a decision. Uh, we, uh, we're either going to say we fail to reject or reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we're comparing 0.484. Is 0.484, is it less than 2.624 or is it greater than 2.624? And the answer is it's less than 2.624. So therefore we fail to reject. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the t calc of uh, 0.484 is less than t crit of 2.624. Indicating that, and this is where you put a little bit more information, uh, indicating that um, the uh, teenagers, um, that there is not enough uh, information to, uh, uh, determine if the students um, or if the teenagers uh, spend more time on the phone. The difference of 0.25 hours is not enough uh, with the current, is not enough with the current sample size to determine if teenagers uh, spend more time on the phone than the previous population population measure and that's it so uh, that right there is question number 54 um, so for bringing it all together, watch that YouTube video right there, and it brings you through this entire thing. So just make sure that you do that, and uh, you will be golden.